We were all born and raised in Houston. He loved Houston. He loved downtown. He loved, he loved everything and everybody. He was very friendly, very outgoing. And he made friends very easy. Growing up in Houston, downtown has a lot of uh, homeless population. And Justin would collect socks and blankets during winter and pass that out. Uh, he was very giving, a very sweet soul. And I lost him February the 12th of 22 to fentanyl. He didn't know it was fentanyl. He didn't ask for fentanyl. He didn't want fentanyl. We didn't even know anything about fentanyl. Uh, he did ask for a oxycodone. And he thought that they gave him an oxycodone. And he took half of that oxycodone. The pill itself was stamped as if it was an oxycodone. But it was not. It was fentanyl. And half a pill killed my son. And now we're raising his two-year-old baby. And I see him and her all the time and it makes some days good, some days bad. Justin, um, I saw him the day that it happened. I saw him at 10 o'clock that night. And he was wearing his yellow checkered vans. He loved vans. He had every color vans that they make. And this day he was wearing the yellow checkered ones. That was the last I saw him. And then seven days later, the coroner gave me a red biohazard bag. And in that bag was his pants that I keep at the edge of my bed. Because I hold on to little things that I have. Because that's all I have. Is vans. And pictures. That night, when I last saw him, he was going back to his house. And that particular night, I had his baby at my house. She was spending the night with me. So I went, I went home and I put the baby to bed and I went to bed early, right after that. The next morning, I was in the kitchen cooking and the doorbell rang. And I went to get the door and I opened the door and there was two police officers standing there. And that was odd. And the one police officer looked at me and he said, are you Stephanie? And I said, yes. He said, do you have a son named Justin? And I 
I said, yes. And he said, well, we need to talk to you. And I just felt it. I knew something. And I said, no, no, you don't need to talk to me. He said, yes, we need to talk to you. And he asked if he could come in. We stepped into the living room. And he said, we found Justin today. We found Justin this morning. I said, what do you mean you found him? He said, he's not with us anymore. He said, he's dead. And I remember screaming to the top of my lungs for my husband. He came running out of the room. And I couldn't listen to him. I walked away. I went to my room, into my closet, and I laid on my closet floor and I screamed and I screamed and I screamed and I screamed till I just fell asleep. And I came out of that closet three days later. I stayed there. I didn't want to come out. That's how I found out. February the 12th, it was cold, and it was raining that night. And they found him outside on the porch, on a bench. He was sitting on a bench outside his house. His roommates came out of the house. They found him at 8 in the morning. His roommate was leaving for work. Walked outside and saw Justin sitting on the bench and thought Justin it thought he was just out there, you know, having morning coffee. So he went over and shook him. He said he knew when he looked at him. He said he knew. And he called the police. And the same two police officers that showed up there are the ones that came to my door to tell me that they had just found him. When, uh, when the coroner was done with all of his stuff, seven days later, I got his shoes and what he was wearing, and in the bag was a cell phone. It was dead, but I immediately plugged it up and I started going through it. Everything, all the pictures, all the texts, all the phone call logs, everything. And I knew the last time I saw him, so I knew the timeline and I looked at it and there was a text message on there from a man named Roy. And it said, I'm in your driveway. Come out and get this SHIT. And my son replied back, you have the pill? And my son was dead just a few hours later. There was not an investigation. I did my investigating. <laughs> I found Roy, I found his address, and I gave it to the police. Nothing. And I asked them all the time, have you talked to him? Have you called him into the station just to question him? And the answer was always no. I said, did you question the people that were in the house when Justin was found? And the answer was no. 
Oh, I got tired of the answer, no. So I decided I was gonna do something. So I got the address to that man's house. And the address is to that man's mama and his sister. And I contemplated for days, what, 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 what do I do? So I set up one night and I wrote them letters. I wrote them letters. And I pled to his mama, from mama to mama. You know what your son did, I know what your son did. Have him go turn himself in, talk to the police. He did it. On the letter, I put the police, their phone number, their address, so they wouldn't know who to call. And I said, do the right thing. And I was arrested for it. Harris County arrested me for that. Felony charge, I spent a day in jail, spent the night in jail. Impersonating a police officer. Nowhere did I say I was a police officer. But at the end of the letter, I signed it. The initials for Sergeant S. Jones. I just made up a name. I wanted his mama, I wanted them all to, to know. Call the police, give them the information. I wasn't trying to be a police officer. I just wanted the letters to look real. And they arrested me, it was a felony. I saw the judge the very next day and I got a $10,000 bond in Harris County, which normally they're not that high. My husband got me out immediately. We have a lawyer. My court date is in eight days. We'll see what happens. The same officer that stood at my door, the same officer that told me my son was dead, the same officer that saw me fall to the ground screaming, is the same officer that had me arrested for writing the letters. And I think that hurts more because he saw, he saw the pain that it caused. He saw, he was in my home. So I'll never understand why he couldn't arrest anybody but me. So still to this day, um, the police have not reached out to me and told me anything about Justin's case, nothing. It was something I felt like I had to do because nobody else was doing anything. I had never heard about fentanyl until the autopsy report came back. And in that autopsy, I read that my son's heart weighs 330 milligrams and his brain weighs 1,400 milligrams. No parent should know that, but I know that because of fentanyl. So I just hope that people do their research and they read about this and they know that it's everywhere and in anything. And now is not the time to experiment with anything. And even if the pill says it's 
a pharmaceutical pill? It most likely isn't, but you won't get the chance if you take it. And I think parents need to know and don't say it couldn't happen to my child because it can. Fentanyl doesn't care who you are.